these are the problems from section 6 and chapter 5 dealing with expected value. And the first two problems deal with a game between two people where they're tossing two coins. And the way the game is played is that uh, if both coins come up heads, Bill pays Larry $4. Otherwise, Larry pays Bill $1. And then we're asked some questions about the expected value of this game. Okay, so we're going to assume that this little phrase here, Bill pays Larry $4, that's going to be the net amount of money that Larry makes. Okay, so Larry will bet $1, and then at the end of the bet, he'll get $5 back, $1 will be his, $4 will be profit. Okay, when I give you these problems on the exam, I'll always say uh, profit or net payout. Okay? And it asks for the expected value of this game for Bill. I'm going to give it from Larry's perspective. Um, it doesn't matter. They're just the opposite of each other. If Larry's expected value is $1, Bill's has to be negative 1. They always have to add to 0. If somebody wins money, someone has to lose that same amount, right? Okay, so let's go ahead and we'll do the problem both ways, from a table and from a formula point of view. So um, if two heads comes up, okay, the probability of that is one-fourth. The payout for Larry is $4, so the contribution to his expected value is going to be $1 when I multiply these two. All the other outcomes have a probability of three-fourths, and for each of them, he's going to lose $1. So the contribution to the expected value is minus three-fourths, and when we add these, we'll get one-fourth of a dollar, or 25 cents. And you can do the same thing using the formula. The probability Larry wins times the payoff if he wins, one-fourth times four, minus the probability Larry loses times the payoff, payoff for the loss, which is going to be three-fourths times one, and again, you'll get a fourth. Okay, so both give us 25 cents, and of course, they have to give the same answer. Um, one thing to note is that the book's answer is wrong. It gives 25%, and that's not correct. Um, expected value never has units of percentage. It always has units of money, especially in a betting context. So please don't put that. That's wrong. The expected value is not a percentage. It's always an amount of money. Okay, now we're told that they play 100 games. We want to know who, sh who should come out ahead and by how much. Well, we know that... If we play any given number of games, the expected value is just the number of games we play times the expected value for one game. So the expected value for Larry after 100 games is going to be 100 times the expected value of his for one game. And we know the expected value um, for one game uh, for Larry is one-fourth of a dollar. So it's 100 times a fourth or $25. So after 100 games... On average, Larry is up $25, and Bill's going to be down $25. So obviously, Larry's going to be ahead. Now, that ends that uh, collection of problems. 14 is kind of tricky, and it's one of the reasons why I really suggest the table method, because um, notice that you have three outcomes. And the formula gets a little tricky when you have more than two outcomes. Because here you're going to bet $1, toss two coins, and three things can happen. First, you can win if two heads comes up. You can lose if a heads or a tails comes up. Or you can draw if two tails comes up. In other words, draw means that nobody wins any money. There's no net payout for either, either party. Okay, so now if I fill in the table, the probability of two heads is a fourth. The payout is three-fourths. So when I take their product, it's going to be 3 over 16. The probability of two tails is a fourth, but the payout is zero, so their product's going to be zero. And of course, the probability of getting one heads and one tails is a half. The payout's negative one, so their contribution is minus one half. And when I take 3 sixteenths minus one half, which is 8 sixteenths, I get minus 5 sixteenths, or minus 0.3125. So the expected value is minus five sixteenths of a dollar, okay? And normally we would round this off to cents, okay? Uh, the book tells you not to, to round off, but, I, but I'm going to ask you to, because I think it's stupid uh, not to round off, especially for one game. Okay, so here, even though you would leave it, according to their instructions, as minus 31.25 cents on the exam, I'm going to ask you to round it off to the nearest cents. And I'll explicitly ask you to do that.
Okay. Um, the next problem is a problem where you have two friends betting on the outcome of an election, whether McCain or Obama is going to win. You're told the probability each candidate winning. And you're also told that in the bet, um, if Obama wins, you're going to get $1 of profit. So notice again that profit of $1 means this is your net payout if you win. And you're trying to figure out how much you should pay your friend if you want it to be a fair game. In other words, you don't want anyone to have an average. It's like a friendly bet. Okay? The thing to remember that's important is a fair game is a game whose expected value is zero. Okay? So let's write down all the information. And I'm going to look at the, the bet from my perspective. Okay? Or you could say from your perspective, not your friend's. You always have to choose a side, okay, when you're calculating expected value. So from your perspective, the probability you win is the probability that Obama wins, and that's 54%. And your, and your net profit, or your profit, is going to be $1. The probability you lose is the probability that McCain wins, and that's 46%. And you don't know how much you're going to lose. That's what you're trying to figure out. So let's plug all this in the formula for expected value. So expected value for one game is the probability you win, which is 5 fourths, right? Times the amount you win, which is $1. Minus the probability you lose, which is 0.46, times the amount you have to pay out if you lose. And you don't know what that is. You're trying to figure that out. Okay? See, it says here, how much should I have agreed to pay my friend? So you don't know what this is. But we're going to use the fact that in the fair game, the expected value is zero. So I'm going to make this whole left-hand side just zero. And I'm going to end up with this equation right here. And notice, now I can solve for x. Okay, I have, a, I have an equation in, in one variable that I can solve for. And when you go through all the algebra, you get $1.17 after you round it off. And so that's what your payout should be for your friend in order for the game to be fair if McCain wins. Now notice it makes sense, okay? If you're more likely to win and you're going to get paid off a dollar, in order for it to be fair, you should pay your friend more since he's less likely to win. Okay, so intuitively it makes sense that you should have to pay more than a dollar. Okay, the next one's an insurance company problem. So um, here we're told an insurance company charges an annual premium of $450 for a fire insurance policy. If there's a fire claim, on average, they pay out $100,000. And we're told the probability that there'll be a fire claim is 0 0.004. And we want to know the expected annual profit of one insurance policy. It's important to understand that the game is one policy for one year. Okay? And so, if we look at these probabilities, if we look at the we look at the time when when they when they when they lose when there is a fire, right? It's 0 .004, and notice what the net payout is. Okay, you you get four hundred fifty dollars in premium, but you have to pay out hundred thousand dollars. So the net loss here is uh, ninety nine thousand five hundred fifty. Okay, when there is no fire, that probability these two things have to add up to one. This probability is going to be 0.996. And of course, I get the entire premium. I don't have to pay out anything. And so I go ahead and I calculate um, these contributions and I add them. And you'll find out that difference turns out to be $50 exactly. Okay, so the expected value or the expected annual profit of a fire insurance policy for the company is going to be $50. Now, what if they. Um, have a thousand policies. Well, that's like a thousand games. Okay, so I'm going to multiply that fifty dollars times a thousand, and I'm going to get fifty thousand dollars. Okay, and that's their that's their expected value on a thousand policies for a year. Or if we want to say it a little more cleanly, we can say that's the expected value on a thousand annual fire insurance policies. Okay, now we're given an insurance policy that has to do with um, a payout for, for uh, hospital stays. And so we notice that there are three outcomes again. Okay, um, they, they charge an annual premium of $100. But 
there's two things bad that can happen to you. First, you can have outpatient care, in which case the company has to pay out $900. Or you could have an overnight stay, which on average would be $3,000. And so they figured out what well, they've estimated the probability of the outpatient and the overnight from data they've collected. Okay, They determined that on average there are five claims made that result in outpatient care per 1,000 per policies. So the probability of an outpatient care is 5 over 1,000. Okay, And there's three claims that result in an overnight stay for every 1,000. So that's 3 over 1,000. That's the probability of having outpatient and overnight. And of course, all of these have to add up to 100%. So this has to be 992 over 1,000. So we estimate the probabilities for the, for the payouts from the data they give us, and then we can calculate the probability that we don't have to pay out anything at all. And now we look at the outcome. So when nothing happens, the insurance company, from their point of view, gets $100 profit. When you have an outpatient care, they still get the $100, but they have to pay out $900, so they end up paying a net of $800 out. And when there's an overnight stay, again, they still get your $100, but they have to pay out $3,000, so they end up losing $2,900 net. And now when I multiply these, each of these contributions, okay, I get these numbers, and I add them up, I get 86.5. Okay, so... The company, on average, makes an annual profit of 86.5 for each policy. Okay, each policy, each annual policy is like a game. All right, that's it for these problems. These are good problems to practice. They're very, very similar to what I'm going to give on the exam. So if you know these, you're totally ready for the exam.